Okay, this is June 25th. It is our third Esperanto class, I think. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ron Glossett. Salute on, Gonan Dagon. That's hello and good day in Esperanto. See you, Estes, la tria sesio de la classe. This is the third session of the class. And the first thing I want to do is to ask if anyone has any questions about anything. You now have some time to look at things. We've been moving through things rather quickly. In fact, my general approach is to give an overview first, and then we will go back and get details. But now's the right time for anyone to ask any questions they have about anything. Um, how do I access the uh, uh, material we are going to go over? Uh, for today or for yes. next time? For, for today. Um, so I'm Simon Simonian. Yeah. So it went out in the email. Did you get the email for today? I the, the email, uh, but I didn't click it to, to look at the material. Well, the, atta the attachment was at the bottom. The attachment was attached. I see, I see. So uh, how can I, is that something you have to print afterwards? No, all you gotta do is click on the attachment. Uh -huh. You can just you can access it during the meeting by just opening up a, a you know another computer, making sure you're not on full screen. I don't mean a computer. I mean opening up another window. Sorry. How, how can I do that on this uh, screen? How do I do that? Well, make sure you're not in full screen. If uh, go to the upper right hand corner and and say exit full screen, if you're in full screen. Uh, and then I, you're no, I'm in partial screen like you. Uh, but I can see, you know, the participants one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But can you see can you see your little icons at the bar bottom or top or left or right, wherever you have your icons on your computer? Yes, I can see them. Now which one do Well I... then you can click on click on your email. Click on the one that opens up your email. How would I know that? Um where is that? It doesn't say anywhere. Click on your email. I think you have to exit full screen. Up oh, right. He can see them. He said he can see the icons. Barat, do you have an idea? I see you waving your can, hand. Can you see I, my face? Can I, you I, see I, my face? I, like I, I can see yours, Roma? I just want to say that the attachment for session three is it was sent earlier in session two it's the same I it guess. was it was sent last so maybe week too, maybe you know uh, so i don't think say, how do you say okay, uh, Simonian, um, uh, already has Simon. that attachment if you had taken um, it out uh, yeah session two it's not anything new well i right. haven't really it's done it in the first place let me close the whole thing and go to this attachment see what i find then i'll join you back um Simon, um, do you know Simon. how to minimize a win the window that you're in? Do you know how to do that? Um, no. Well, I am in the minimize okay. side. Every one of us is minimized, isn't it? We are no, no, no. How to no. minimize any window? Um, what kind of computer do you have? Do you have it's Windows a, uh, or Mac? Uh, it's a... Uh, Dell computer, D E L L, Dell. Okay, so it's Windows. Good. <coughs> then what you can do is hold down the Alt key and press Tab and keep pressing Tab until it opens your email program. So I press which letter? Alt. A L T, not not the letters. It's it's next to the space bar. Um, it's, it's one. It's a key that says A L T, and it's right next to the space bar, to the left of it, probably. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yes, so I press yeah, that. So hold that down, and at the same time, press the tab key once. 
Hold it in. And which tab shall I press? The There's tab only key. one usually. The, the key, key that says there. The, the key, key that says tab. There. Hold it and then press it once. Same thing. Yes. Okay, then, I did that. Okay, what happens? You have to keep holding down the Alt key. Don't let go of the Alt key. Hold and press the yeah. Alt key with, and then press the Tab key, and it should open up every thing that's open on your computer. The Tab is the same ALT or some other one? No. No, it's it's key. Tab, it's next to your Q button usually. Next to the letter Q. It says uh, T-A-B. Tab, I ah, got you, got you, yes. Okay, yeah. now. So all I, I, and tab at the same time. Okay, I'm doing it now. Okay, what are you seeing? Uh, I'm seeing um, Zoom. Uh, Can you find your, your email? Can you find your email window? There is a second email where you are not there. I can find that one, but the, I have a Zoom email. Probably that's the one. Yes, I have. So what okay, do I do so next? Okay, your email is open. Good. And then just find me. All right. Let me see. Thank you. Okay. I think we. Yeah. I think we should go on. I'm sorry, yes. but sorry about that. Now, Donna, I, I believe I, you have some, some questions. I do, I do have some questions. So I was reading page two of the initial handout we got that says Esperanto grammar. Yes. So the first slide was the Esperanto spelling. And last time, uh, Dave Otten told us to, we should be reading this. So I yes. started reading it. I had read the first page, but not the second. Okay, so it's uh, number two, nouns end in O. I get that. And for plural, add a Y, sounds like, well, I mean, and, add a J, which sounds like Y yes. for plural. Then for cases nominative, O, you mean add O, I mean, O is the nominative, as it is. O, as is. So just the noun as it is, is nominative. But yes. if you want to turn it to accusative, you add an N. Is yes. that what that's saying? Exactly. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I couldn't understand that when I read it by myself. Now, okay, now you so. Also, you also add the N when you want to indicate that it's not the subject of your sentence. At the very beginning, I said salutone. If I just said saluto without the N, it would just mean a greeting. If I put an N on it, then it means I extend to you a greeting. So ah. it, it's kind of an abbreviation. Of it doesn't really make sense, but it's used so often that people just say it. Okay. All right. So then under adjectives, I get it every ends in an A. And if you want to say more, like comparatively, you do you replace the A with PLI or do you add PLI? Add PLI. Add to the A. No, okay. It goes before word. the word. Oh, it goes before the word. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so in English, you would say big, bigger. In Esperanto, you would say big uh, or more big, grande or pli grande. Got it. Got it. Okay. And more, the O-L, more is um, then like more big than, what does that, what does O-L more yeah. mean? O -O I mean, is, then. Is that the word than. O-L is equivalent to the word than. Oh, I see. So it's not like you add that to the adjective for anything or it just it's means than. It's a separate word. Oh, O L equals yeah. than. Okay, I'm I'm so, sorry. For example, I, I really. If you want to say bigger than a cat, you would say pli grande o cato. Bigger. Got it. More big than a cat. 
Great. Great. This is Simon, I have a question. Can you hear my voice? Yes. 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 Uh, now, I have this uh, uh, attachment open, but it's taking the whole screen. I can hear everybody, but I don't see anyone. Can you see as well as, or just listen now and uh, look at okay. this? Uh, um, yes, we can. We can see um, you and look hear at the you. top of your window. Top of look what? At the top of the window with the attachment. And then what should I do? Yeah. Um, what do you see? There should be three little buttons. Um, yes. Does one of them look like it has a short line in it? Uh, save as. Let me see here. Uh, no, 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 higher than that. Higher than that? At the very top of the window. It's going to yes. be either on the left or on the Share right. this page or, or uh, add uh, notes or... No, higher than that. Look at the frame around the window. Restore down. No. Okay, restore. What else? Is there, is there something that looks like a short horizontal line? A short, a short line, yes, okay. So okay. it's a, That uh, should be the minimize. Minimize, button. minimize. Okay, click that. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. And then you can use Alt-Tab just once to get that. All right, you let me just tab and then I'll get uh, the writing I'll as well. Hold Alt and then yeah, Alt tab should, is a quick way to switch between applications, between programs. I'm holding the tab. Now what's happening? Yeah. Let me see. Okay, so can you switch back and forth between Zoom and the attachment? Um, let me see. Just the tab? Alt tab. Alt, alt, oh, alt, and then yeah. tab. Okay. Alt yes, tab. at the same time. Uh, I'm doing it now. Uh -huh. And nothing happening here. So I'm pressing down. And yeah. I can see the pictures, but not the uh, uh, written material like I did. Okay. Um, do what you did last time. Whatever you did last time worked. So do that again. I had to switch off completely and go to my email separately last time. No, but, you stayed here. You didn't switch off. We uh, still saw you and heard you. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so or if I, you could just print it out, that would work. Ah. Uh, uh, now, oh, I saw something now, just for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, here I see something. Yeah, okay. Esperanto song, yeah, it appeared, but uh, I need to enlarge it because it's very small. Let's see whether I can find that. Can I go back to my questions? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Please do. So, um, Number 14 on this page. I don't know if the rest of you are follow, able to follow along or um, I apologize if you all understood this right away, but I, I didn't. Well, we're so number 14. Questions just for that reason. Right. Number 14 says each preposition has a definite and constant meaning, but use variable yeah. ye, yeah, 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 which has no meaning. If sense doesn't indicate, I, I don't understand this. Can well, you say this in words that I might get? Well, let me put it this way. If you want to say it in a prepositional phrase, like you do in English, you can do that. You can also say and use the word, and so suppose for example, I wanted to say on Monday, I will see you. Ye lundo, mi vidosteen. But I could also just say, London, me, Vito, Sveen. So I can either use a prepositional phrase as one does in English, or I can use an adverbial form tomorrow, Lee. <laughs> um, okay. Monday, Monday, 
Monday. Is that, is that um, yeah, is what you use when it's not obvious what preposition you should use. <laughs> it's a bit of a, that's right that's literally Thank what it is. Thank you very much. It's that's kind right. of a wild card. Okay, there's some kind of preposition here, but none of the usual ones yeah. seem to yeah. fit. So that's yeah. what so that I mean. That preposition J-E is very important to remember. Yeah. Okay, I can use that all the time. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not on, it's not in, it's not about, it's something. <laughs> okay. I, I can give a common example, Donna. When you're toasting someone, you say, ye via sano. We say to your health, ye via sano, but there really isn't a preposition that fits. It's not in your health or on your health or it's ye via sano, to your health. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, Th those are my questions, I think. Mm -hmm. I could use an example for number 13 to show direction toward nouns take accusative ending. Could you give me an example of that? I understand what that means, but I could use an example, okay. I think. Um, how this is the co one common one is me yes Heyman. I am going home. Now I I said I put an N on that to show mm -hmm. that I'm going towards my home. Got it. Got it. Thank yeah, you. That's a little yeah, more advanced. Yeah. We usually discuss it later. But it's it can indicate movement toward something. Got, got it. I get it now. I, I understood it, but I needed an example. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Yeah, Thank most you. Most people take some practice with this. Most people don't get this immediately. Right. Thanks. Doc on Jane, uh, let me indicate an example. Mm -hmm. If you said la cato estes en la chambro, the cat is in the, in the room. The cato eras in the chambron into the it becomes into the classroom. So that letter N is what you would use to indicate into instead of in. Like mm -hmm. again, the cato estes in the chambro. The cat is in the room. The cato eras in the chambron. The cat goes into the room. So it's a, really the difference okay. between in and into. Whenever you want to use into, you put an N on the object of the preposition. Okay. Simon's back. Does anybody have any other questions besides mine? I'm done. <laughs> um. I just printed, uh, this is Simon, I just printed that thing uh, and I've got it in front of me. I Good. want to catch up with you. Where are you now? Well, we're ready for questions. Do you have any other questions? Oh my goodness, I don't know. I haven't, uh, the, uh, well, what are we going to do next here? Well, right now, the first thing I want to do after we make sure that everybody has their questions answered, is I want to ask, can anybody count up to 10 in Esperanto? Maybe we should do it together first. Uno, do, three. Two, three. Where is it written? Where's that I'll written? go a little slower. Okay, uno. Uno. It's a, wait two. a minute, Simon. Yeah. Simon, it's on the bottom. It, the two page document you just printed out, it's on the bottom of the first page, I think. Okay, Is that right? got you, got or you. The second, right? got you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, got, okay. I'm there, Bob. So, let's all count together. Right. Uno, uno, two, two, two three, 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 three,
Deck. 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 Okay, now Oak. Esperanto at this point Oak. is much easier than English, where you'd have to go 11, 12, 13. In Esperanto, you just say 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus, so it's deck unu, deck du, mm -hmm. deck three, deck quar, deck bean, deck ses, deck sep, deck oak, deck now. Deck now. And then 20 is two tens, do deck. Do deck. And Tree deck. 30 is tree deck. tree deck. And 40 is car deck. And 50 is queen deck. And 60 is cess deck. Ses. And 70 is sep deck. And 80 is oak deck. And 90 is now deck. Okay. Now, 100 is tricky because it looks just like our word cent, C E N T. But in Esperanto, that beginning letter C has got to be pronounced like a T S. Yes. So you're going to say cent, cent, and that's the word for a hundred. And then you go up, uh, do cent, three cent, quart cent, bean cent, ses cent, sep cent, oak cent, now cent, and then we have meal for a thousand. Do meal, tree meal, car meal, clean meal, ses meal, sep meal, oak meal, now meal, miliono. <laughs> Do me open is que tio suficias. Does anyone have any questions about the numbers? Bone, good. Um, the next question would be, on the same sheet that you were just talking about, on page four, and the lower left corner are the words connected with time. Page, page four, four, I've got only two pages here. Well, there's... yeah, there, no, they were only two pages in this. You had us take out the rest, I think. Yes, you gotta go back to the beginning of the course. Oh, oh. I didn't print those. Um, okay. So that was the one I was talking about, right? So page four, it looks like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, exactly. I haven't printed that. No, I'm sorry. Corner. I don't have that yet. That's exactly the right page. The fourth page. Okay of the original document. And when was that date when the email was sent, Donna? Do you know the original one, roughly? I'll go look. Um, let's see. Hmm. Uh, First session of Esperanto class. Let's see. Um, it was sent June 8th, Monday, June 8th. I see, okay. And, and the file is called Esperanto Charts. I see. That was the attachment. Uh huh. And there were four pages to it. Four pages. Uh, now it's going to be difficult for me to find that right and print. And I'm losing you when I go out. I'm losing you for some reason. I don't know how I can do it at the same time. Like, you know, Jane was advising me, but I couldn't do it at the same time. Okay, Ron, so what are we going to do here? Okay, I did want to at least go over the words for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Pierao, Codiao, and Morgal. Is that in the original printout? Yes, I yes. suppose. Well, it's on the fourth page in the world. Oh, know. hey, you know what? Maybe I can pull it up on my, I can share it from my Zoom. Oh, that um, Hold on. 
Yeah, Let that's me, a good go. idea. Share screen. Yeah, I, I will share my screen. I'm sorry I didn't think of this earlier. A little thick here, but it's all right. You've got it right in front of you, so wonderful. Yeah, here we go. It's opening. Okay, share screen. Here we go. Oh, how nice of you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Now down that there we see tempo. Tago for right, day. Here. Milk dough for night. Noon for now. <clears throat> to you for immediately. How do you pronounce that? To eat to? To you. To you. To you. To you. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. I'm sorry. To eat. To eat. To eat. That's what, yeah. To eat. To eat. That's immediately, yes. Okay, then bow thou. Bow thou. For soon. Bow thou. Soon. And Ho diao for today. Ho diao. For tomorrow. Yera for yesterday. Yera now for already. Ankora for still or yes. Sound to sound like a for Evening. Mateno for morning. And post tag mezzo. Tag mezzo would be noon. So post tag mezzo is afternoon. Post tag mezzo. Post tag mezzo. And then immediately to the right of that are the names of the months, which are very similar to English. Januaro, Februaro, Marto, Aprilo, Mayo, Julio, 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 September. October, November, December. 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 And then down below that are the days of the week that are somewhat similar to French, not completely, but, uh, and the order here might be a little unusual, but that's what it has here. Sabato for Saturday. Sabato, Sabato like Sabbath. Sabato for Saturday. Demand show for Sunday. Sunday. Lunch uh, for the day of the mass for the eating of God. <laughs> the mancho. And then Lundo. Lundo. Mardo. Mercredo. Mercredo. Jaudo. Jaudo. Vendredo. 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 And then the sezonoi, the seasons. Printempo. Printempo. Somero, Somero, Autuno, Autuno, Vintro, Vintro, Aha. Yeah. Um, one thing where I've gotten confused in the past when I was first learning this is that if you look at the months, Marto is March, but Margo with a D is Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> so they are only one letter apart. So for English speakers, a possible mnemonic Go. is that Margo has a D like like day. Um, mm, that's helpful. Margo yeah. is a day. It's a day. Right. Margo is a month. Yeah. Cool. That's helpful. Thanks, That's Jane. That's an easy one to trip up on. That goes, Jane. That was a very good point. Can you repeat the pronunciation of yesterday? Yerao. Yerao. Yes. The, the big thing in Esperanto is to remember that each vowel is a separate syllable. So you never combine the two vowels like you might in English. In Esperanto, right. E R O, three syllables. E because the last two are a diphthong. Because the last That's two are right. a diphthong. <laughs> a diphthong counts 
as a diphthong. As one. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Ah, so I think we do want to move on because my main thing I wanted to do was to sing a song together. Ah, uh, Joe. Oh, here, want me to um, stop share. You yes. know, I could want, want me to go look for the, um, the words to the song. Would that help everybody if I pull up the words on the screen? I think that would be yes. a good idea. Thank you. Um, okay. Ah, uh, bow, oh, oh, shoot, cho, cho, do, he, fo, cho. Most of you have the uh, printed material in front of you, I suppose, uh, do you? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So there are four. Sorry, Mike. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I just need to scream. Okay, uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you, Duncan. Yeah. Canto de la Coloroi, Song of the Colors, sometimes just called Rouge a Pomo because that's what the first verse is. And then it says, Uzu la Francen Melodion, Rara Jaca, use the French melody Brother John, which is a very familiar melody throughout the world. World, Rouge a Pomo, Rouge a Pomo, Estas G, Estas G, Pomo Estas Fruto, Pomo Estas Fruto, Fruto, yes, Fruto, yes, Fruto, yes. No, none. Now maybe we can just sing it together since we've got the words in front of us. We'll go kind of slowly. If you need some help with the English, it's over on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Rouge a pomo. Pomo, rouge a pomo. Pomo, estas fructo. Pomo, estas fructo. Fructo, yes. Baba Rosa, Rosa, Flava Rosa, SSG, SSG, Rosa, SSG, Rosa, 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 Pedro, 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 Blue eyes, you both. Blue eyes, you both. SSG, SSG, Jupo at the festo, Jupo at the festo, festo, yes, festo, yes, 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 SSG, SSG, Cato Festo, Cato Festo, 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 yes, Festo, yes, Blanca, Mega, Mega, Blanca, Mega, Mega, Never at the beard, never at the beard, beard, yes, beard, yes, Bruna Tablo, Tablo, Pablo Estas Neblo, Neblo, yes, Neblo, yes, 
Esperantists were complaining that in my words for the song, sometimes you have to sing two or three syllables to one note. And they <laughs> said, oh, you can't do that. Well, I said, in my experience, many hymns are sung that way, where they will put more than one syllable to each note. But notice what I've done in that song. If you look at the last three verses, <clears throat> I mean, last four verses, you got Pilco S. Es Ludilo, Auto S. Es Vetorilo, Porco S. Es Mangilo. Where are you? Where are you? Again? Ilo <laughs> is an <laughs> instrument. It's a suffix that means instrument. Which, so, which, which uh, verse are you? He's here. Can you? Can you see my cursor? He's Mangilo. He was talking this, right? Mangilo? Yes, Mangilo. And then right above that, in the next verse, is Vetorilo. And above Betterilo. that is, is Ludilo. Ludilo. So Pilco S is Ludilo. That is an instrument for playing. Ludus is to play. So Ludilo is an instrument for playing. In the next verse, auto es es veturilo. Veturas is a verb meaning to travel. So veturilo is an instrument for traveling. In the next verse, porco es es mangilo. Manges means to eat. Mangilo, therefore, is an instrument for eating. So a fork is an instrument for eating. So you see three verses in a row there that use the suffix elo to indicate an instrument. And that was the point, to help people get used to the idea that in Esperanto we have these suffixes that have different meanings that you can put on different words and the meaning of an you instrument 
days the you same. Bunker. Abel. Nikola. No. So, does anyone and have any questions? Yes, Donna. Yes. So first is Ficho. Do you pronounce the word for fish Ficho? Is that am I yes. saying Ficho? Yes, remember in Israel that letter I is equivalent to a double mm. E in English. Right. And the S Ficho. with a hat is a sh Samu estas Ficho. Ficho. Samu and the, the, estas Ficho. That, and in fact, sure? you have yes. the same thing with regard to yes. beardo. Right, really. beardo. beardo. The bird is a beardo. Yes. And also, Bron, I think sure. I think that the last word of the song, family, is an example of number sixteen on page two that yes. says. The final vowel of nouns and articles may be omitted and replaced with an apostrophe, as in poetry. Exactly. Right? Good point. <laughs> Bona punctual. Mm -hmm. Familio. Familio. <laughs> so the word uh, really is familio, but questions. you can leave it off. Uh, incidentally, notice that even though the main point of this song is to teach you the colors, you also get other nouns, like mm -hmm. tablo for word for table, and kato for cat, and ringo for ring, beardo for bird. Mm -hmm. so there are different words, no. and there are and there, lo and there are lots of examples of the a using a at the end as an adjective, and o is of the end of a noun. Yes. Exactly. Good point. Bonapunto. And you can see how the suffixes can save on memorization. Because in English, um, the word play is completely unrelated to toy. Or eat is completely unrelated to utensil. You have mm -hmm. to learn each one separately. Mm -hmm. With Esperanto, yeah. you can you can learn manji, and then ilo, and then it becomes very easy to remember that a manjilo is something you eat with a spoon or a fork, a utensil, yeah. or a ludilo because ludi is. To play, ludilo is something you play with. So it's, it's designed to save on memorization. Also, es, estus is uh, a intransitive verb. It means to be or is. Mm -hmm. So you would not put an N on any of the nouns like fructo or floro. Um, so it's the apple is a fruit. So we don't use the N for fructo. It's not fructo, it's just fructo. So mm -hmm. you don't use the N with estus. Back oh, on. yeah. Back oh, on. yeah. Yes, that's a good point, that when the verb is an intransitive verb, then you don't have a direct object. And then you don't have the letter N after the verb. And that, so when, that verb estus is directly from Latin, I believe. Yeah. I think that's how you say is or am in, so in Latin. In English, when we have is, we call the noun after it a predicate nominative. Yes. But um, so that's why you do not use an N. It's not accusative. And, oh. if, and if it were an adjective, it would be a predicate adjective. Placato estes negro. No N because it's a predicate adjective. Are there any other questions or comments? A little question. In the print, printing, 
the background is green. The, the paper has had a green, you know, color to it. Can you print yes. it black and white or is it always to be green? Well, some of the things are deliberately on green paper. So it makes it easy for me to find them <laughs> when I'm carrying a bunch of documents of, of different things. But green is important because green is in a way the color of Esperanto. The Esperanto flag is green with a, up in the corner, a, um, a white background and an, a green star. So a green five-pointed star is also a symbol for Esperanto. But green also, for many people, green is a color of hope. And that is connected with Esperanto because Esperus means hope. Esperanto is a person who hopes. Paralanto is a person who speaks. Musicanto is a person playing a musical instrument. So Anto, A-N-T-O, always indicates a person that's doing something. And then you use the verb, what it is that they're doing. Cantanto um, would be a singer. Esperanto uh, is a hopeful. A question? Can I ask a question? Someone has a question? Simon, yeah. Uh, the question is, now, at one time you did mention who speaks Esperanto in, uh, in the world. Uh, could you repeat that uh, wrong? Well, Yes. Okay. Thank you for that question. You know, as a matter of fact, there are Esperanto speakers all over the world. And once you become familiar with Esperanto, there are Esperanto meetings being held. Now, obviously, because of the pandemic, it's not happening now. But ordinarily, there's uh, an Esperanto meeting happening somewhere in the world almost every week. And then every year, at the end of August is the Universala Congresso, the Universal Congress, where you have 1,500 people from all over the world coming together. Uh, and each year it's in a different place. This year it was scheduled to be in Montreal, Canada, but they had to cancel it. And they already had next year's meeting planned for Finland. So they had to put off the uh, Montreal meeting for another year. So two years from now, the Universal Congresso will be in Montreal, Canada. Thank then you. there's also a, na you, there's a national assembly every year. And of course, it won't be held this year. It'll have to be by computer, but there is usually a national meeting. And in fact, we had national meetings here in St. Louis. In, in 1999, meeting national in the USA. Pardon? The national, national meeting. meeting USA. Yeah, Esperanto USA. And there are and how many? Kind of and sometimes there, 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 there are lower levels there as well. So Simon, you and I are in California, yes. and that's actually California has its own event that happens. I think in like February or March. So, and one very interesting thing that's happened because of the pandemic is that a lot of meetings that would otherwise take place in person have moved online, which for Esperanto means that anybody can come. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, I participated in meetings that were held in Germany, in Brazil. Um, there's a web page that lists a lot of them. Uh -huh. And all you need is Zoom. Most of them use Zoom. And as long as the time zone fits. Uh -huh. Now, the next question I have from uh, Ron. Ron, can I ask you another question? Yes. Um, namely, uh, let me see, where are you here on the screen? Um, 
uh, why are they learning Esperanto? Is it because they are interested in uh, bringing the world uh, together? Well, that's the idea that if we're going to have a world, we need a world language. If we want a world community, in fact, that was an idea right from the beginning. Why did Zamenhof invent Esperanto? It was to help people who don't have the same language to communicate with each other. And so that's been the, from the very beginning, Esperanto has been known as the language for peace by bringing people together. And so the Esperantos, knowing that this is a new language for almost everybody, they have a lot of meetings. The meetings are to give you an opportunity to practice your Esperanto. And uh -huh, to thank you. With people from all over the world. Yeah. And, and then once you get into it, it also just becomes something to have fun with. Yeah. It's a language you can definitely do a lot of creative things with pretty quickly. Don Kong. Yeah. Dave has a question. Um, Comment. Just, let me just tell everyone that next week we will go over lesson one, which you've already been sent. Uh, which means reading the first two pages and then translating 20 different sentences into Esperanto. And what we'll do next week is go over those 20 sentences. So actually write out those 20 sentences and uh, we'll see that everybody has them correct next week. Uh, now, uh, question, David. Uh, this I would find well to print it. And which, uh, which so, I, I, it went out in that first email that was uh -huh. June 8th, the and, uh, the I believe. Uh -huh. yes, um, it is attached, but I think it would be a good idea, Donna, if you I will send it. it out again, absolutely. Great. Yeah, and, and that would be the case not only for next week for Dave, who will be doing the lesson next week, or the following week when Jane will take over and do lesson two on, uh, what is it, July the 9th. We have so, a few minutes left. I think oh. we, uh, next week is uh, uh, Thursday the 2nd of uh, mm. July. Is that the one? Yes. Oh, Again, actually, I, d I did not send lesson one out. It doesn't look like it. Well, I think it was. I'll send it to you again. In fact, I, I have it. I have it, but I don't see it attached to my first email. So I will, maybe we thought it was too early, but I will send it out. Is it again 12.30 right uh, for the uh, Pacific Standard Time, 12.30 to 1.30, like it is it today? It will be the same time oh, yeah. as today. Okay. In our remaining minutes, Ron, I suggest we go to the co-relatives because they're very helpful on the fourth page. Yes, although uh, that is the last lesson on our last day in July, that will be the focus. But it is important to recognize that those correlatives are an important part of Esperanto and a unique part of Esperanto. I just want everybody to see how the chart works. That's a good point. So if you go to fourth page. I don't know, Donna, if you can uh, get that up. Oh, I can. Yeah, sorry. Let me go find it again. I hope. It's doing a nice job of getting our page um, up there on the screen. Oh, wait. I have to go. I shut it, I think. I have to go open it again. This okay. is the fourth page of the chart, right? Yes, exactly right. Okay. So this time it's the upper right part of the page. Oh, I probably have it open a hundred times, but that's all right. Okay, here we go. Share, share screen, you, you, you and me both. All right, here's that four page document. We're going down to a fourth page that yes, says right. table of 45 correlatives. What does yes. correlative mean? Maybe what we want. What is that? Well, now look at how that table works across the top you have the first syllable. Down the right side, you have the second syllable. And then in the chart itself, you have them combined. 
So the first one in the upper left is teal, that thing. The next one to the right is keel, what thing? The next one is eel, something. That's very handy. If somebody says, say something for me in Esperanto, just say eel. <laughs> That's how you say something in Esperanto. Chio is everything. And neneo is nothing. So you see how, how logical it is. As you go across from left to right, all of them have to do with something, but it has to do whether it's just one thing that is present or another thing that's not present or something indefinite or everything or nothing. The next line across, T-O, one individual, that individual. T-U, which individual? E-U, some individual. T-U, every individual, everybody. Neniu, no one. So that's all having to do with persons. The next line across, all are adjectives. So, and they all end in A. So Tia is that kind of thing. Kia is some kind of thing, or what kind of thing, I mean. Ia is indefinite, some kind of thing. Chia is every kind of thing. And Nenia is no kind of thing. Now, the one that is most likely to make sense to you in English is the last row across. So let's go all the way down there to the bottom. And we see the first one is Tiam, that time, then. Kiam, what time, when. Iam, sometime. Chiam, always. Neniam, never. And mm -hmm. right above that are the different logical things. Tiao, that reason. Kiao, what reason. Iao, some reason. Chiao, every kind of, every reason. Neniao, no reason. Now, obviously, many of those don't get used very often, but some of them do. But I guess the other one that we might do is right above that one. Um, yeah, up to oh, and the, the places, the third, the third one down. T yeah, oh, that place, the third the, one down. Wait, what kind yeah. of place? Yeah. E this one? No, the that, one that ends in A. a. The, the third line. Oh, across. kind of. Oh, okay. Yes. Kind oh. of. T Tia, that kind of. Kia, what kind of? Ia, some kind of. Chia, every kind of. Nenia, no kind of. Which line are you now on, please? The, the third row across. Uh -huh. But it's actually the fourth. It's the fourth row because there's a heading. Oh, well, <laughs> right. Okay. Not the fourth row, but this, this, you know, not counting that. He was on right. this line. The A, yeah, kind of. Down home. Uh-huh. Thank you. Anyone any has question other questions? We're getting near the end here. Can I ask a question from Donna? Donna, uh, the uh, first lesson you mentioned was the, in the email June 8. Can I find it there, did you say, for me to print those early four pages? Yes, oh, this document that I'm showing you now was in that email from June uh -huh. 8. Uh -huh. And I see the paper is in white this time rather than green. Yes. This time, okay. all of them are in white. Good. But Simon, that's different from uh, lesson one, which we'll do next week. Uh, and Donna, when is that going to be? Well, I mean, when do I find the writing for the lesson one? Donna will send it out again. Ah, got you. Thank, thank you, David. Okay, so our time is up, maybe. And Don Gorn, oh, everybody, Don, 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 thanks for Don. Thank Dave, you, Don, you want to say something more? Everybody do the 20 sentences for lesson one for next week. Yeah, before class, not, not during class. During class time is only to make sure that you've done it right and discuss any questions you have about it. But you're supposed to do it ahead of time. And that would be not only for lesson one, 
for that for the rest of our course for the, every session there will be another another lesson and jane will be doing it on july 9th for lesson number two and then all of us will be doing it up for lesson three the following week and lesson four the following week and lesson five the last week and those are all part of a correspondence course that was very popular decades ago when we used mail in order to learn the language. Uh, wow. Uh, excuse me, Ron, Simon here. Uh, could you repeat the uh, uh, lesson dates again so I could just pop it in my uh, calendar here? It, it, it's always on Thursday afternoon. I'll send it, I'll send it in an email. I'll send uh, it in the email. Okay. Because we should go now. Our time is up. Uh -huh. So, um, so I'll I'll send an email with that information. And the belated. I don't have. I don't think I have all the lessons yet to send out. Well, but I'll I do have lesson you. one. I'll, I'll okay. Send it to you. You mentioned okay. uh, belated Father's Day for all of you who are fathers. Well done. God bless you. Have a wonderful year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks to everybody. And bye. bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.